Hello YouTube. Here we have NSU, Audi, and Opel for some more German cars. So before there was an Audi, there was NSU. Audi was a conglomerate formed of a couple different uh, previous automakers, including Auto Union and NSU. This is an NSU. And it's a particularly interesting car. Let's take a look. It's a Corgi Whiz Wheels. You see this is NSU R080. It was a sedan. I wish I had a better example of this, but I don't. Um, front opens. And the interesting thing is in here, I don't know if we can tell from looking at this but the interesting thing about this car is that it had a rotary engine the famous Wankel rotary the same engine that a Mazda RX-7 used uh, now I at one time owned an RX-7 so I'm a big fan of them and hence of the rotary engine so for me the NSU is a little special the only other NSU that I have a model of is this this is a concept car the model is from Norev, about 166 scale. And I have it in two colors. This is called a trapeze. Uh, this one was designed by Bertone around the time that he designed the uh, Stratos. Uh, it wasn't designed by Bertone, by Gandini at Bertone, I guess. So the, the window is reminiscent of the Stratos. The windows look very Stratos. But the rest of it, the hatchback, obviously it's an attempt to use some of those styling cues to make something a little more practical. But it remained a concept that was never produced. So then Volkswagen bought NSU, folded it into Auto Union, it became Audi. And I don't know the rest of the story. I say Audi, you say Audi, Audi. Some people say Audi, I say Audi. So this is a Shuko model, one of the 166 that I'm always going on about. The Audi 100 Coupe. Uh, these, as usual, have great molded details all over the place. Opening doors, nice interior. Well, at least a basic interior. You never see Audis this old, certainly not in the United States. Here's another one. Audi 80. Now this car is another Shuko model, of course. I think, I sort of vaguely remember, I didn't research this, but I vaguely remember that this maybe did come to the United States and it was called an Audi Fox, perhaps. But I guess in Europe it was called an Audi 80. And they kept with that uh, name for, for their sedans for a long time, Audi 80, Audi 90. So we've got a couple more to show the development into the later styling. The early styling was very angular, but they completely changed their identity with this rounded styling. This is a majorette. It's got opening doors. Pretty nice model, but the real nice one, if you want this car, is this. It's a Tomica Limited Vintage. Trust me, if you keep looking long enough, it's possible to get these for prices that are, if not reasonable, at least not too outrageous. I can understand why you might not be satisfied. If you just, if you pay the asking price for a model like this, like if you just go on eBay on any random given day and try to buy this car, it's going to cost you probably more than $50. I don't know. I haven't looked for it in a long time. 
but it's a, a really high price and then there's probably shipping from Japan too and if you pay that much and then you find details missing or paint issues which some people have found I can understand why you'd be dissatisfied but that's not the way that I buy them I will save a search on eBay and I'll keep looking for months years and there's some that I, I have never found in a reasonable price and I just won't buy them but every once in a while you do get them so that's a TLV Audi 80 or 90 and now let's look at some quattros <coughs> excuse me I made too many videos today starting to sound like Tom Waits okay this is a sport quattro this is a recent Hot Wheels release it's a really nice one of course this was the rally car that changed the world and this is the same car slightly larger this is a Darda model I only have a few of these Dardas these are pullback cars and most of mine don't work anymore but I like the bodies on them so that's the Audi Sport Quattro this is an older casting from Matchbox and the proportions are a little different particularly if you look at the back window the distance from the B pillar to where it cuts downward on this one it's very short and on this one it's not and that's the difference between the Sport Quattro and the regular Quattro Sport Quattro had a shorter wheelbase for rallying and this is more of the proportions of a regular quattro that you could buy that more people would buy for road use it's a classic matchbox cast uh, no moving parts or anything so even though that one's got the kind of rally colors on it it's not the sport quattro and this one is an irregular blue the same matchbox all right so the quattro was the iconic audi of my youth but to the kids nowadays it's the r8 this is a matchbox uh, this was some from some international series or something comes with rubber tires but the and you know i don't mind this paint actually but the deco on it the stripes and the r8 lettering it's just ugly it's too busy I think this could have been a lot nicer I wish they'd done a better job of it so here's an R8 with no premium features it's got a plastic base it's got plastic wheels the wheels aren't terribly interesting this is a welly but it represents the car better than the matchbox does Here's the convertible version from Hot Wheels. I always like this blue paint on Hot Wheels. It always looks kind of still liquid to me. And then we've got another Hot Wheels uh, LM Racing R8 from a premium series I don't remember which one it's got a roll cage in there it's got the wing the crazy aero stuff and speaking of liquid paint check out that base that's like the hidden feature of this car to look at up top it's not really all that interesting but wow the base all right that's it for Audi the rest of the video we're gonna look at Opal Opel is a uh, European branch of GM and I talked in another video in a Ferrari video actually about a car company called Bitter in the 70s and 80s there was a guy named Eric Bitter in Germany who took Opel's 
and put new bodies on them and upgraded the interiors and stuff. I really, really like bitter cars. There are not, to my knowledge, any 164 models of bitter cars. But the uh, Opal, I love for two reasons, and one is the relation to bitter. So this is an Opal Manta. This is a 166 Shuko. Uh, it's seen a lot of rough treatment. It looks like probably somebody went over the base with a Sharpie or something too. And the bumpers, unfortunately. It's got opening doors. The Manta, there's, Shuko did two versions of the Manta, an earlier one and a later one. This is the later one. I would really like to get an example of the earlier one. I think it had maybe round headlights, but I have not found one of those for the right price yet. And the rest of the Opals we're gonna look at are all the same car. Uh, it's the Opal GT. Now the Opal GT is a car that I remember seeing all over the place in the 70s. It's another one of those cars that mostly has disappeared, like the Fiat X19. Used to be all over the place. Don't see them anywhere now. Maybe they've all rusted out. And it was known in the 70s kind of as a ripoff of the Corvette, the C3. Uh, it looks a little bit like a C3 to me, but I actually liked the design on the Opal more than the Corvette, oddly enough. This one is not the best representation of it. This is a hard casting to get. It's rare. This is an old Seco with opening doors. A lot of the old Sikus have very loose opening doors. And the problem with this one, uh, the front is kind of more squared off. Kind of ruins the curvy look of the car. But it's a kind of a valuable casting. Um, orange, I guess, was a big color for cars back in the 70s. This one is from Play Art. So this play art, the base, I think it, it looks a little plasticky, but I think it's metal. And this is an older one, I think, because the wheels are different. The hubs, I think, are the same, but the tires, they're plastic, but they're really, really skinny, like low profile tires. And then play art put this same thing out with much thicker tires, and I think these came later, and the base is different. So I think the blue one is a later version, both made in Hong Kong. And this, you get a better sense, it curves in the way the car does instead of on the Siku. And I guess this car, it didn't, um, it didn't have a really powerful engine, so it was more about style than performance. But I've seen a couple on YouTube that are hot rotted and have body kits like flared flenders and spoilers and crazy engines, and they're really nice. This is another car I could see myself driving in real life if I ever had an opportunity to have one. This is another play art from the same era probably, in green. And Play Art also did these little, slightly smaller cars with no interiors. These were a little cheaper. So that's an orange mini one. And then we're gonna go back to Shuko 166 once more. This is one of my favorite Shuko 166 castings along with the BMW E25 Turbo. That's the Opal GT. They got the shape just right. Looks perfect. Uh, this base may have gotten some marker on it at some point. This one's kind of orangey red with a stripe. But check out the doors on this. This is something you never see nowadays. The frame opens too. 
There's a reason you don't see it nowadays is because it's fragile. And I understand that little kids are probably going to crush these immediately. But for adult collectors, I don't know why people they don't make something like this. The FC RX-7 that I used to own had an interesting door frame shape, kind of like a Porsche 928, and I wish there was a model of it with the frames that open just like this, but there isn't. So I've got that one with the stripe. Uh, let's see, I've got this kind of stripped down one, all the paint's gone, the chrome's gone off the wheels. Doors still work though. Doors are still intact. And I have a blue one. Move that ugly one out of the way. With a red interior, blue with red. And finally, red with red. This is the fancy one, mintiest. Like I always say, they don't make them like they used to. Why doesn't somebody make a car engineered like this now? Sure, it wouldn't cost a dollar like a Hot Wheels, but maybe it cost $12, $15 like a Mini GT. I would pay that. I guess there's no demand for it. But there you go. That's the Opal GT. And here's some more Opals and Audis. And that covers the rest of the random German cars. So what we have left now is BMW and Porsche. Porsche. So BMW is going to take more than one video, definitely. Porsche is going to take probably more than two videos. So we've got a long way to go before we get out of Germany. Um, move on to... England, America, and Japan. If you're along with me for the ride, thanks for watching. As always, leave a comment below, please, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.